And there's some other costs that obviously go into it. Every time you add a new physical unit, there's new instrumentation, new piping, new control systems. You're complicating the flow sheet. So those are additional costs, but they're softer costs. Um, if you're only evaluating purely on capital cost, uh, you need to make more of the same process. Okay, so I just want you to be clear on that definition for conversion. Also, um, let's just go switch over here to the other board then. I could consider a balance for units too, for the second vessel. I just want to derive this equation. This equation is kind of shown up here, and just plugging in the definitions for FA1 that we saw last time in terms of conversion method. This new definition here, FA2, in terms of FA0 and X2, where did this come from? Okay, so it seems intuitive. If you look at the definition for FA1, I could say FA1 is the flow in minus the conversion, 1 minus the conversion outside the first reactor. But given that X2 is a more messy definition for conversion, let's just work through that. It's not as simple as it looks up there. It's, the end result is simple, but the complexity to get to that is not shown in the but let's just assume that you understand where it comes from. So let's take a look at it. The balance for unit 2. Could be written as N minus consumer. So at steady state, n minus consumed is equal to out. We're comfortable with that. And in into unit 2, we have FA1 molar flow. So moles per second into unit 2. <coughs> minus consumed. What's consumed in unit 2? I'm going to derive that from unit. And leaving unit 2 is FA2. So let's be clear that this is consumed in unit 2. So one way we can look at that is we can write the following. The total consumed, total mold of A consumed is equal to consumed in 1. this in last class, so let's just FA0 times X1. So the moles in to unit 1 multiplied by the conversion I have in unit 1 is going to be how much I consume. The total consumed is a similar idea. It's FA0 times X2. times x2. That's the total moles consumed from the very beginning of the flow sheet up to that leaving the center reactor. Consumed in reactor 1 is the total moles entering the flow sheet up to that leaving the first reactor. So if the left hand side isn't making sense to you, plug in the individual definition for FA0 here. FA0 is the total moles of A entering the flow sheet. X2's definition moles of A reacted from the beginning to the end of the flow sheet. From the reactor start to the end, divided by moles of A fed into the first reactor. That's FA0. Okay, so X2 definition is total moles of A reacted divided by FA0. So FA0 is cancel out. So X2 times FA0 is correctly the total moles of A consumed from the very beginning to the end of the system. The total moles consumed in Reactor 1 and 2, if you want to be explicit. Right. Okay, so now I can solve for this in terms of what's consumed in Unit 2. What's consumed in Unit 2 is clearly this, this term. And I'm putting it in a box. 
box because that's the box I'm looking for. So we'll continue to unit two. That's what's consumed in reactor 2. There's a difference between the two reactors. Another way of writing that is let's just expand these terms FA1 minus FA0 X2 plus FA0 X1 is equal to FA2. Okay, so I get that term over there, FA1. I would also like to just write FA1 in terms of my previous notation that I had, which was sub in there, FA1 is equal to FA0. Minus x1. So I'm simply replacing that with what I know. So expanding that again as fa0 minus fa0 x1 minus fa0 2 plus fa0 x1. So I get some cancellation here. And then I can write this as fa0. 1 minus x2 That's where what I wanted to derive. It's not obvious. Um, it looks intuitively obvious, especially when you compare it to the previous formula. The previous formula for FA1 is equal to FA0 1 minus x1. And the problem that I have all the textbooks simply state that FA2 is equal to FA0 1 minus x2. So that's what I just derived over here for you. The final goal, the final result, looks intuitive and seems obvious, but the way of getting there here is not obvious. And the reason why it's not obvious is because of this definition of X2. And the definition of the third reactor of X3 and X4. The first reactor's definition of conversion is, is comfortable, but the second reactor and subsequent reactor's conversion, please be clear, it's relative to the entry point. It is not the conversion going from the previous reactor, uh, from that reactor's entry to X. It's not the conversion over that single unit. It's the conversion from the beginning to the end. So we get these, it's always we're referring to the total conversion relative to the entry point. That's the that's a critical, critical idea of this section. Okay, so the reason why we, I, I emphasize that point is because all of our reactor designs here, when we looked at the class last time, we're considering areas under the curve. And we're going to add areas next to each other. So here in this example, I have a CSTR area followed by a plug flow reactor. In other examples, we'll have a CSTR followed by a CSTR followed by a PFR and so forth. This is the key way to design a reactor. This course could end right here, and we would be pretty good and pretty well off in terms of the size of the reactor and understanding what affects the size of the reactor. That's, that's the truth. However, we've not considered a number of complexities. We've not considered rate expressions and their temperature dependence. We've not considered temperature profiles throughout the reactor. And we've not considered changes in volume in, in gas-based systems. So in a gas-based system where you've got the number of moles on the left-hand side of your reaction changes to what's on the right-hand side, you're going to get an increase or a decrease in pressure. And as you get that change in pressure throughout the system, your, your pressure is going to change as conversion changes. Okay, so there's a number of complexities that we've not considered. The rest of this course purely just adds these complexities in. The base idea 
is totally chapter two. The basic idea of Ramsey design is chapter two. Now, in tonight's class, we're going to consider rate rules. And it's a, essentially just a recap of, of uh, some basic chemistry concepts. So, I'll start over here. So this is essentially chapter three, if you're looking to follow in Kroger, it's chapter three in Kroger 2011. And it's also in Kroger 2006, the molar version of the textbook. And essentially the chapter is called uh, Rate Laws. Let's just quickly recap what we mean by that. It's essentially minus Ra. That's our rate law. And we said in the very first part of this course that that's an intensive property. And we like intensive properties because they can apply on small scales, they can apply on large scales. So for a big reactor or a small reactor, we could get a minus Ra. It applies in a plug flow reactor, it applies in a CSTR. It's totally intensive properties, it's not a function of the size of the reactor. So let's just, uh, let's just also add some other ideas to that. So far, we've only dealt in terms of RA, and we've only ignored the other species. But in general, we've got this idea. That the system with species A and B and C and D, the stoichiometry of the coefficients, lower A for the first species, lower B is C and D, divide through by that lowercase a, and we get it in terms of the base rates of a. So we have the idea that if one mole of a is consumed, there will be b minus a, uh, b over a, moles of b consumed as well. And there will be, for example, d over a, so from now on, of course, we're going to really consider these other species we've neglected them up to now. And the very first way we're going to see that is what is the rate of consumption of A is, is minus RA. So we've dealt with minus RA and we're very comfortable with that. But what is the rate of formation of D, for example? So minus RA is the rate of consumption of A. What is minus, what is RD? And how is it defined in terms of RA? How is that related to the rate of consumption of A? Change the sign. Multiply, divide. Okay, so RD is the rate of formation of D. And it's going to equal over A times minus RA. Yeah, one mole of consumed, <laughs> one mole of A consumed, yes, thank you. Okay, so in general we could we have this idea that minus RA over lowercase a is minus the rate of consumption of B equal to the rate of formation of C divided by lower C equals the rate of formation of B. So that's this is standard standard uh, pattern chemistry. So where we're heading with this is uh, we're going to look at temperature dependence later on. But also what we're going to look at in tonight's class, we're going to look at the structure of this rate expression in terms of concentration. So what I mean by that is minus RA we were used to expressing it as a function of temperature. 
multiplied by a function of concentrations. So the most common example is minus Ra is K0 e to the minus the activation energy Rt. That's my temperature dependence multiplied by Ca. So we're used to this as a form of first order. then of reaction orders. Just a quick recap of that. Minus Ra is equal to K. And I'm going to emphasize here that that reaction rate's constant is with respect to A. So minus Ra is Ka times Ca to the alpha power Cv to the beta power. So the overall reaction order here is equal to alpha plus beta. We also say the system is in alpha order with respect to A and it's beta order That's uh, the usual terminology. So for example, I can have a third order overall system. <coughs> Minus Ra is equal to Kca <coughs> times Cv squared. That's an overall third order system. Alpha and beta will definitely not be integer. So third order overall system, this is one example. Or another example, would be minus Ra is Kca squared Cv. Both of those are third order systems overall. The first system, however, is first order with respect to A and second order with respect to B. And then conversely, the second system is second order with respect to A and first order with respect to B. That's not too, too, uh, that's kind of picking heads. What I'm more interested in is we generally refer to the overall system order, which is the sum of the individual orders. And then the other thing that's important to remember is what is this reaction rate <coughs> constant? This reaction rate constant K, let me emphasize that it's with respect to this particular species, with respect to A in this case, with respect to A. Well, I will show you in a minute why I'm emphasizing that, because if we're looking at it with respect to a different species, there's a relationship between Ka, Kb, Kc, and Kb. So just in general, the units of, of K, so I'll just call it the gen general K, that has units of concentration, So for example, uh, Ka for a third order system as units using that, that idea that for a third order system n is equal to 3, so it would have units of concentration to the power minus 2. So that's moles per meter cubed units of minus 2 divided by units of time, the units of seconds minus 1. 
My preference always for units is to use SI systems. And I prefer always when I write my units, I work in a single row. I don't use fractions and numerators and denominators. So if we simplify this a bit more, we would then find that our units are moles to the minus 2, meters cubed to the plus 6, seconds to the minus 1. This is for a third order. So the units of K always vary depending on the order of the system. These units get even more awkward when our system is not of integer order. Okay, so we can easily have systems where those exponents, alpha and beta, are for example 0.5 and 1.5. Very common in catalytic reactions. And these rate expressions are found, there's many of them available for us. We don't have to always go and do the lab work. Many of them are available for us in standard libraries, particularly the United States government, NIST, is a great source for rate information data. So it's the National Institute of Standards and Technology. They have these compiled in tabular form for many, many systems and reaction species. And of course, a number of journal publications. IPCR, Industrial and Engineering Chemistry Research, published in the Chemical Engineering Journal, published. Let's, uh, let's take a look at some other terminology. So next class is just definitions. <laughs> So we call it a reaction, elementary reaction. If the reaction order matches the stoic geometry. So let's take an example. Uh, so for those of you taking Dr. Brooks' class, you would have seen this reaction over the past few days. So minus the rate with respect to NO. This is an elementary reaction because the rate expression, the rate of consumption of NO is equal to KNO times the concentration of CNO squared times CO2. So it's a third order rate, uh, rate, overall rate, and the orders match the stoichiometry coefficient of 2 in this expression, getting my second power oxygen to the coefficient of 1. So it's rate No, this is what the definition of an elementary reaction is. So a non-elementary reaction, and there's many more of these than there are elementary reactions, does not follow that. So here's an example. For example, laughing gas. Oh, sorry, uh, I mean, phosgene. Phosgene is carbon monoxide plus chlorine. Goes to phosgene. Phosgene was used as a chemical weapon in the First World War to kill people. So it does that by asphyxia. It's very easily produced. It's trivial to take and purchase carbon monoxide. It's trivial to find chlorine gas. You put it through an activated carbon, a very, very easily obtainable catalyst, and you get phosgene. And kill yourself. <laughs> so facilities that produce this is an important starting compound for many number of organic intermediates, <coughs> COCl2, always produced at the same site where it's consumed. It's never transported because of that tremendous risk. So its rate expression minus RCO is non-elementary. It's KCCO times the concentration of chlorine to the point 1.5. We call this five halves overall reaction. Another one is for 
laughing gas. Laughing gas is even more messy. This is an anesthetic that's not used anymore. It used to be used for dental work. So please notice here this is N2O, not NO2. So nitrous oxide, or laughing gas, decomposes into nitrogen and oxygen. And its rate expression is minus R N2O is equal to the rate constant K N2O multiplied by C N2O divided through by 1 plus K dash C times oxygen. The moment we have these ratios, we really cannot go and decouple the temperature and the concentration independence anymore. They're mixed up with each other. There's this new rate of denominator. One thing that's important and interesting to notice with these expressions where you get a numerator and a denominator and there's a con concentration in, in both of them. This is not in the textbook, so this is additional. We call this a mixed order reaction because what we can say is at low CO2, so low concentration of oxygen, that system is essentially first order in terms of nitrous oxide. What do I mean by that? At low concentrations of CO2, that term in the denominator falls away, and my expression is essentially minus R N2O, which is the K N2O, so C N2O. So at low CO2, we can say it's got an apparent first order. And at high, Assignment and tutorial questions you're currently working on in assignment one and in assignment or tutorial two, there's that a similar ratio, except the numerator and denominator concentrations are for the same species. Again, another form of mixed, mixed uh, mixed rate, depending on what the concentration level is. Okay, so these are called non-elementary reactions, where the rate expression really cannot be determined from the stoichiometry on its own. And the way we would find those, we use purely experiments. And so if you're wondering how the heck do we ever know these, and how does, for example, NIST, who compiles this data, how do they know which type of equation to use? Well, they don't. They look at the data, they run the experiments, they guess which type of form it might be, they fit the data to that experiment. If it fits, they've guessed correctly. If they don't, they guess another alternative refit. So, Let's just make a note here that <coughs> experiments are used for two things. To confirm the structure of the rate expression. Okay, so purely guess and check, guess and check the iterative process. I will show you how to do this in chapter, when we get to chapter seven of the textbook. It's also a very fundamental part of statistics, which is an area that I look at in my own, in other, in other work. So the structure of this rate expression is confirmed using experiments, and we also obviously get the values of the constants. the concept of a reversible reaction because that's going to be uh, something that we're going to consider more and more. Up to now we've considered reactions that really essentially go in a single direction and we assume that we pretty much end up with our products. But for the most part we're going to end up with a mixture of original species plus products. 
And what are those relative concentrations? They're given to us by the reversible reaction equilibrium curve. So, Take a look then at reversible reactions, and we'll take this traditional AA plus BB goes to CC plus DB. So the very definition of equilibrium this is the, this is important. Uh, the very definition of equilibrium. What is the rate of Formation of A and equilibrium. Zero. Zero. Not a trick question. So the explicit definition of, of equilibrium is that the rate of formation of A is zero. Also, we know that. RA is related to RB and RC and RD, that formula I showed you previously. So those rates are also all zero. The system is totally at equilibrium. Nothing is being formed, nothing is being created. And we also recall that my equilibrium constant is defined by equilibrium concentration of C raised to the power of C multiplied by the equilibrium concentration of D raised to the power of D divided by the equilibrium concentration of A to the A and B to the B. Okay, so I'm not sure if you use this notation in Canada. Um, I don't see it in Fogler, but maybe in other, it is on, it's widely used elsewhere. Um, so what I mean by that, for example, curly bracket braces A is the concentration of A at equilibrium. The reason why I use that is because if I have to use C subscript C raised to the power of C is what gets out of hand. So concentration of A at equilibrium. There's another definition for this that's not overly explicit in Folger. Um, he kind of uses it without informing you about it, and maybe some of you have forgotten a bit. But if we refer to my forward this is really bad. I wrote a reversible reaction and then I just put the forward out. Okay, so let's, uh, let's clean that up. So there's my forward and my reverse rate. And if I call my forward rate RA and my reverse rate RB, so I don't rest, I should be writing constants. So KA and K minus A. Do that standard terminology? rate constant going forward, my rate constant going back. The units of Kc, sorry, the Kc, another old definition for it is K subscript A over K subscript minus A. So the ratio of those two rate constants. Of course, that the units are easy, easily found. The units of Kc are moles per meter cubed d plus c minus a minus b. Let's uh, take a look at an example for the class. <coughs> so that's all the theory I'd like to introduce. We're going to just take a look at it in terms of a reaction system. This is benzene going to diphenyl and hydrogen. So two benzene molecules will work with equilibrium with diphenyl. Actually, also known more commonly actually as biphenol. The reason why Fogo has used that 
is because we're just going to use B for benzene and D for light phenol. Rather than the light phenol, which is more, more usual name, your we'll light 2B is in equilibrium with C plus H2. So if I consider just the forward reaction and now, it says minus Rb, the rate of consumption of benzene, this is an elementary reaction, it's Kb, the concentration of benzene squared. So elementary reaction means it obeys the stoichiometry. So the rate, the forward rate of reaction um, is the rate of consumption Let's just make this clear. That's the rate of consumption of benzene, my starting product. I could also write the reverse reaction. also an elementary reaction, so it's K with respect to benzene again, but C, D, the concentration of diphenyl, multiplied by the concentration of hydrogen. So this is the rate of creation of benzene. So at any moment in my reactor, any moment not at equilibrium, I'm both consuming benzene and creating benzene by those two individual reactions. At equilibrium, I'm neither consuming nor creating the, my rates are equal to zero. However, at all those other times, we can then write Rb net. Notice here I'm using the positive RV. Okay, how many of you wrote that negative sign there? Did you write it or just make it a positive? A mistake. The rate of the creation of B. So it's clearly positive. The reason why I'm doing that is because now to understand the net, we need to look at this. The signs are important. So my mistake, the rate of creation of B is RB reverse. So the, the net of B is equal to, I'm going to look at it in terms of consumption. Consumption of B in the forward direction. Plus, and here's where I'm going to do something that might be a little bit unusual. We're going to call this consumption of B in the reverse reaction. You can look at this net rate as the creation of B in the forward reaction plus the creation of B in the reverse reaction. But either way, at some point you're going to have to create this fictitious consumption, which really, in the reverse direction, isn't, we're not consuming B, we are creating it. So that indicates just a sign flip. So the net rate of consumption of B is equal to minus RB in the forward direction, minus RB in the reverse direction. Okay, so since consumption is the uh, opposite of creation, I can just use a sign for it there to get consumption. If you prefer to think of things in terms of creation, please go look at Fogler's definition. I prefer to work in consumption where that's the natural uh, frame of reference for myself, um, is that we're working on what's being consumed. But if you prefer to work on what's, uh, what's being created, that's also quite okay and you get the same result. So subbing there 
our values, we get the minus rb net is equal to kb cb squared minus k to the minus b, the concentration of diphenyl and the concentration of hydrogen. So my net consumption of b is forward direction. That's the part I'm, we're used to seeing up to now. It's just this forward direction. But now we have to recognize that we're depleting um, we're negatively consuming B. Okay, so it's minus K substitute to minus B C, the concentration of diphenol, and C, the concentration of hydrogen. So, this is where the rate, uh, the equilibrium constant comes in. Recognizing that KB is uh, there and K to the minus B is there, we can write the following. We can pull it out front and then say k minus b over k plus b, the rate constant in the reverse and forward direction. And that term over here is my equilibrium constant. For those of you sitting in the back who can't see, so down here, minus RB is equal to KB, my rate constant in the forward direction, concentration of benzene squared minus concentration of phenol, concentration of hydrogen, divided through by the equilibrium constant capital K. Yes. Uh, why is RB net negative? Like, you don't know whether it's moving forward or, or negative before the reaction. Okay, so when we're talking in terms of consumption, we've, we've got the minus RA. So up to now, like we said, oh, okay. minus RA is the consumption of A. One thing that you must be uh, clear on here is there is the relationship between what's up here on the board now and what this equilibrium constant is. I've used the definition of equilibrium constant Kc. It's the ratio of my forward and reverse rate constants. But we always must make sure that our expressions agree with thermodynamics. And thermodynamics tell us that the equilibrium constant Kc is equal to the ratios of these concentrations. This rule that I wrote up here applies in all cases. Those coefficients here are always the stoichiometric coefficients. So this law is a thermodynamic law that applies. Does this rate expression that I've got up here that I've derived agree with thermodynamics? It must. And so we can verify that by saying minus RB net is equal to zero at equilibrium. And, and see what that solves for. So zero is equal to k lowercase b, uh, so lowercase k b, c b squared minus c b c h2 divided by k c. Or in other words, k c. We can also change uh, and use the notation that I'm using up here. So uh, it's really excessive. I'm doing a lot of extra steps that you wouldn't normally do. But we can simply write that as the concentration of C squared minus the concentration of D, that phenol, the concentration of hydrogen divided by Kc. And the only reason why I'm doing that is because we're at equilibrium, as, as, as stated. Which is clear that it matches this definition. KC then is equal to the equilibrium concentration of diphenol, equilibrium concentration of hydrogen, 
raised to the power of one, raised to the power of one, just to emphasize that. The concentration of benzene raised to the power of two. But the Kc is also equal to and reduced it in this derivation, obviously that Kc, the equilibrium concentration, is lowercase k, such would be lowercase k minus b. The ratio of the two rate constants, the forward and backwards. Okay, so this is a whirlwind tour of like Euro pseudo chemistry courses. Recap because we're going to start using it in the class tomorrow. Okay. If you haven't understood this, please go to the chapter 3, sections 3.1, 3.2, 3.3. Okay.